It's a big year ahead for Derry, dusting itself down as the UK city of culture. But while guides tell tourists about the violence of Derry's past, the city's paramilitarism is not yet consigned to history. A new vigilante grouping has emerged, ready to murder, shoot and bomb its own community, placing an estimated 200 young people under threat of punishment, death or exile. All this in a time of ceasefire. This idea of bringing your children to be shot, um, like, where's, where's, the, where's the logic in that? A place where the police admit they are struggling. The, the detection rate is, is very low. It's far too low and we're very disappointed for it. And where parents have to live with a nightmare. Do you know the people that shot your son? Um, personally, I do. I know them all even though they wear a mask. So do. And they know I know. The estates of Derry's Republican heartland, self-reliant and traditionally self-policed. Four years ago, a small number of ex-IRA men set up a group called Republican Action Against Drugs, or RAD. Their self-appointed aim? To eliminate drug dealing from the community. There are drug issues right across this city, as there are in all cities, but it's only in these certain Republican areas that, that there is this issue of young people being shot. It only happens in Republican areas. The one thing that RAD has is simplicity and certainty. There is an out-of-control drugs problem. It threatens your children. We will solve it overnight with a gun. RAD soon added antisocial behaviour to its hit list. Alleged offenders would face intimidation, threat of exile, or a bullet in the leg. This is a law of the jungle. You know, there's no respect for uh, human rights. There's no due process. I do believe that there are people in the community who support them, and I think that's why they've been operating for so long. I have absolutely no trouble with and, and, and agreeing that they have support and a measure of support for what they're doing. But not all of the community are supporting them. Brad's campaign against alleged drug dealers started with a pipe bomb in the Bogside and a shooting in Cregan. Attacks followed throughout Derry and then Straban, with a handful of incidents further afield. Last March, a RAD member was beaten up in a row outside a pub in the Cregan. RAD's search for culprits led them to former IRA man Kieran McFadden, who was asked to hand over his son. I asked him, are you having a laugh? He said, no, I'm not, is it? That's what's happening to him. He said, he's going to get shot. That's nice, not. He said, well, where's that leave me? Kieran McFadden was told his son and nephew had to be in a certain place at a certain time to take a bullet in the leg. It was punishment by appointment. If they didn't show up, the consequences could be far worse. And if somebody said to me, bring your son and he's going to get shot and he'll be in hospital for two hours and he'll be out the same night and he'll be able to walk, no problem, or don't bring your son. And we come looking for him. And we kick on your door and terrify your family and whatever, and shoot your son, and there's no guarantee he'll walk again. Then I can certainly understand where Kieran McFadden and others are coming from. And so at a time and place set by Rad, Kieran McFadden joined his son and nephew at this back lane in the Bogside. Two Rad members suddenly appeared, shot the cousins one after another, and ran away. Both young men are now recovering from their wounds. How could you possibly bring your own child up knowing that they're going to be shot? I had it. I had no wall. I could have moved to other I could have moved out. I had to do it. I moved nowhere. I said, it was a family decision. And it was probably the hardest decision me and my wife as parents made. Was it the right decision? No. What was it? I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I could have moved it, but I didn't move it. That's me, they love that. I asked Kieran the last two weeks, well, Kieran, do you blame me for getting, getting shot, son? He said, what do you mean? Said, do you blame me for getting you shot? And I'm thinking, no, he's never said nothing to me. And I'm sure he's thinking, Dad, maybe you're a background, you could have done a lot more. But I'd done everything I could. I was even fuzzily going to break down and cry in front of them. I was actually going to go down my knees and plead with them. I even thought about it. And I'm 
no problem saying that as a father, but it wouldn't have worked. It was just no, 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 no. Fearing a reprisal, he did not provide the PSNI with information. Nobody has been charged for this, nor for any other shooting carried out by RAD. For every 100 paramilitary shootings or beatings, 96 remain unsolved. The, the detection rate is, is very low. It's far too low, and we're very disappointed for it. It is a different phenomena. You know, they, they operate in tight geographical areas. They operate through intimidation and fear. You know, and I say again, a lot of the people who are actually subjected to these assaults or shootings, the victims, will often not cooperate with the police. The McFadden name is known well in Derry as a staunch Republican family. It is. It is. You served your own time within the IRA. I did. The IRA used to have so-called punishment squads. What's the difference between what the provosts did then and what RAD are doing now? It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. Community advocates here have mediated over 100 confirmed cases of young men facing vigilante punishment in the past year. More than 70 of these threats came from RAD. We've had circumstances where people have been under threat and they've reinvestigated it at, at our request. Uh, they've then said, OK, uh, we love that threat. But not everybody gets a second chance. RAD have shot over 30 people in the last three years and, according to community workers, expelled just as many. But leaving Derry wasn't enough to save Andrew Allen when he was gunned down in Buncrana, County Donegal. The father of two was RAD's first murder victim. 24-year-old Andrew Allen was shot through the window of the house at Lynx View Park. Like my son was murdered. It's like as if they think they're invincible, you know, that we can do it, we, we can just shoot you, we can murder you, we can, you know, do this to you, do that to you. Look at the many young men that, they, that they've shot since, since Andrew. Andrew had, had sort of turned his life around, you know, for the first time in a long time. He had a sense of purpose. He was with a partner. He was settled down in Bonkrana. He was talking about start, starting boxing down in Bonkrana. You know, he, he was beginning to, you know, to, to grow up in many ways. And he, he was settling down, and then this awful, brutal thing happened to him. And he was well known around the top of the Lair area. I mean, hundreds of young people sort of knew, they knew it wasn't true that this is an evil guy skulking in the shadows, you know, supplying, sort of, a, a making vast sums of money uh, through selling drugs. Simply untrue. And I, I think that there was a turn against Rad over sort of the Andy Allen killing. But the Allens, like many other victims' families, feel the police aren't doing enough to stop the attacks. It's not that I don't, uh, you know, I don't have no thing with the police or nothing like that. I just have no faith on them as we guard Rad because they know who they are as well. RAD is a priority, a significant priority for us as the police service of Northern Ireland and in particular the, the PSNI in the North West. But if um, you know who they are? Well, we, we know who they are, the community know who they are, and we know who many of them are. And we, we are arresting many, we are searching their houses. Uh, you know, we live in a liberal democracy. To place someone before the court, you have to prove a criminal act beyond a reasonable doubt to secure a conviction. Public opinion might have turned, but for as long as threats continue, there's no sign of change. Come out front, sit in front of me with a mask on you, and explain to the public, to me, why you are doing and why you think this is going to be a cure uh, for the drug issue that's going on in our city. I want to move on, because it's eating away at me. So it is. But they got their pound of flesh. And then if I come back near my door again, I don't care what happens this time. They'll put me down a hole. So they will. When it launched its anti-drugs campaign, Rad said it had no political agenda, a stance separating it from dissident Republican groups. But all of this may be about to change. Rad started out taking on, ostensibly taking on drugs and antisocial behaviour. We've made contact with them. They say that they intend to start targeting PSNI officers. Well, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a new piece of information uh, to me. Uh, you know, uh, that would be a, a serious uh, step up in their uh, type of activity. But I can assure you that it will not 
deflect at all our determination to protect the community, not just because they pose a threat to us, if what you're saying is correct, but because of what they're doing to principally young men within their own community. We have always called for them to disband. Let, 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 let there be no doubt that there's any truck with RAD among Republicans. RAD may have said at the beginning that they were for the Good Friday Agreement, but their actions and their coalescing with all the other dissident forces leaves me that I can say very, very confidently that there is no difference between all those dissident groups. The public mood is angry, but sporadic demonstrations have not stopped the punishments. Meanwhile, RAD puts trophy captives on display. When you get down to it, who are these people? These are people who've got guns, who operate sort of by terrorising people, by their ability to kill, to maim, to murder. That, that is what RAD is. What is their morality? Their morality is their own morality. It's made up in their own minds. They will decide. They will decide what is a capital crime. They will decide who is guilty and who. They will decide what evidence sort of is good or bad. They will decide sort of what fracas outside a public house sort of a, will lead to the maiming of some of those involved, but not of others. And they will pick and choose between a, 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 their victims. Who, how dare they? How dare they? We asked Kieran McFadden to bring us to the place where he watched his son being shot. The nightmare is all too fresh. This is actually the first time this happy stand staying away with it, so I'm still can't get my head around it. I thought of him standing, holding a riddle, and a masked man shooting my son. I said, what the Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what's going on in this world? I said, I didn't wear my way, like this, he was shot in the back lane. And nobody deserves to get shot in the back lanes. But that's the society we're living in. Nothing's changed, really, is it?